The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Safina Insecticide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Bernard Toba back on the Soybean School today, joined again by Aaron Brimer from uh, Veritas, sir. Thanks for the invitation. Always great to have you on Soybean School. Perfect. I'm glad you could make it down to Chatham. I want to talk about um, fertility, uh, phosphorus. We have so many conversations about how we feed our soybeans and whether we feed them enough. Um, when you talk uh, to growers and you share the data that you, that you work on and the management insights, what do you tell them about feeding soybeans? Are we, are we feeding our soybeans enough? So soybeans and fertility, that is a big question mark. Nobody really has the right answer. Um, every agronomist I've ever met will have an opinion. But it all comes back to what I call the limiting factor. And actually, it's not mine. It, go, it goes all the way back to some late 1800s. Mm. Uh, we call it the Liebig's Law of the Minimum. Most people will know it as the barrel stave. Um, you have staves at different heights, and the staves are supposed to represent different nutrients. And the water, it pours out whichever stave is the lowest. The question is, which stave is the lowest for soybeans? Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. Nobody really knows. When you talk to an agronomist, they're going to have base it on their experience. The challenge is, in my opinion, every field is unique. And if you try to blanket treatment all of your soybean fields, you're going to run into problems. Mm. You're not going to be able to maximize your yield. You need to understand what is the limiting factor for every part of that field and how different mm. fields interact differently. So Aaron, you've got some interesting research here. Take us through it that really shows how variability in fields can impact soybean yield. So yeah, what we did was we took very intensive soil test uh, data and we overlaid the yield data. And what we were looking for was to see how soybeans responded to different phosphorus levels. It would be great if we'd found that perfect curve that every field uh, matched. Here's three fields, all from the same group, all planted roughly the uh, same time, all the same variety, and we have three very different responses. The first one is what I would call your typical uh, response that we would expect to see that as phosphorus uh, levels uh, go up, yields go up to, until you get to a point where the phosphorus is a little too high and maybe that's uh, bringing on some diseases and the yields start to drop off. And then you've got a field that uh, I would describe as maybe a little bit heavier, a little less uh, drainage, maybe there's a little bit more compaction and as the phosphorus uh, keeps going up, so do the yields. And then you got the, uh, these other ones that are the exact opposite where the highest yields almost seem to come from the lowest uh, phosphorus uh, levels. So you got three very different examples, all in the same year, same grower, everything's the same, but you got different responses. This just goes to show that every field is unique. You've got tremendous yield variations across these fields. Um, as you say, three, gr three fields, same grower. What does this grower need to do to better manage these three fields? So what we did, was we took the farmer's yield data, and we took the farmer's soil data, and we created these response curves, not just for phosphorus, but for every nutrient. And then we started looking to see what was the, which nutrient was the furthest from their optimum in any part of the field. When we do this, we're able to say, okay, that part of the field, we have to address phosphorus. That part of the field, it's a potassium issue. This uh, area, probably magnesium. Over here, maybe we need to be starting to think about boron. So, every field is unique. Everybody knows about uh, Randy Dowdy. Mm -hmm. uh, what, 190 bushels? Yeah, Randy, the soybean and corn uh, yield champion over the years uh, from Georgia. So, 190 bushels per acre, there's a guy who is babying his soybean crop. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, he is treating every field uh, differently, and within every field, He's got different zones and he knows what's going on. He's tissue testing, he's soil testing, right? He knows exactly how to maximize the soybeans. Yes, he's got irrigation. Yes, mother nature helps him out. But he sets himself up to win by making sure that his fertility is addressing exactly what uh, that soybean crop uh, is going to need. So you've got some maps here um, that you've developed from you know your work. Um, take us through it and uh, just tell us you know how a grower can use these and maybe, you know, what they need to put into uh, developing this type of management on their own farm? So the tool we've uh, created, we call it soil. 
wasn't my idea to call it soil because you try explaining what a soil analysis is on a soil test and people get confused until you explain what soil in this case means is statistically obtained ideal levels. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing, like I said, we take the yield data, we take the soil data, we overlay the two. And what we're looking for is which one is the furthest from ideal in that part of the field. Actually, we do the top three. So you get uh, soil limiting one, soil limiting two, soil limiting three. So now you know exactly what you have to address in that field. I thought these uh, three maps were pretty cool. However, farmers started to have some challenges to actually understand them. Because let's face it, you look at those, mm -hmm. it kind of looks like someone's thrown up on it. Yeah. So what we did was we actually have crafted that each nutrient has its own map. So you can look at that uh, map and you can see what part of the field is limiting for phosphorus or limiting for potassium. And actually, with uh, some nutrients, you can have uh, too much. One of those things that uh, um, a little is good, too much is, or a lot more is not not good at all. So when you get into those situations, these maps will actually kick out, hey, you have excessive levels. Mm. And then you have to start to be thinking about how you're gonna manage that. Yeah. And obviously it all starts with a soil test. And you're, you're every three to five years, and you're always soil testing, of course, across the farm. Yep, um, I like to see it, um, to be doing fairly intensive soil testing because not only is every field different, but there's different things happening within the field. You should be uh, testing the hills differently than uh, the side of the hills or down in the, the valleys um, where the uh, soil is a little sandier versus where the soil is a little heavier. You got to be thinking about how to soil test. If you take all those different areas and you dump them into one bucket, one bag, and you send it to the soil lab, you're not gonna be able to get real good insights from that, you're gonna get a general idea, but if you're gonna invest in soil test data, and let's face it, most farmers now have some yield data, or they have access to satellite imagery um, that tells them how their uh, crops are uh, changing, because we don't need yield data to drive this thing. We can use satellite imagery too, and we can tell you that, okay, that red area on the satellite imagery, um, that is uh, being correlated to, let's say, low uh, potassium or low boron. Mm. And now you can start to make better decisions. But I would say there's one step even before you get out there soil testing. And that's recognizing that every field is unique. Mm. If you think that all of your fields are the same, there's your first opportunity. Yeah. Fields are different. Yeah. So that blanket approach doesn't work. Get out there field to field test look at those fields as individuals and manage them that way? You got it. Soybeans are a complex crop. We're just starting to scratch it. Uh, that guy down in Georgia, boy, does he have ever, uh, nice yields. I bet you every farmer in Ontario, would, hey, if we could get 100 bushels, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> hey, Aaron, thanks for your insights. Always great to have you on Soybean School. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah.